hello friends this is shiva shankar from safety hunt again with a new video in this video i am going to explain about confined space so after watching this video you will be aware of what is meant by confined space the hazards that are expected in the confined space and the confined space safe entry procedures and last uh, the duties and responsibilities of confined space so let's start about what is meant by a confined space confined space is any closed space or enclosed space where the entry and exits are limited and uh, the oxygen level will be very minimum and uh, there might be a chance of flammable and combustible gases inside and it is not designed for continuous occupancy or long term work these if these all criteria are matched it's known as a confined space so let's see what are all the hazards inside the confined space so the confined space main hazard is a flammable gases which may present inside and uh, there might be airborne combustible dust and uh, there might be uh, low level oxygen and atmospheric condition that will be immediately dangerous to life and health also the atmospheric concentration which is above permissible exposure limits so apart from this we can also have a chance to encounter this toxic gases which produces from uh, stored products or uh, the work we are going to execute like welding cutting or something so this toxic fumes may arise from this kind of activity so let's see the testing methods what are all the testing so apart from that there are other hazards as well like uh, physical hazards mm, noise and uh, slip trip fall engulfment and uh, these kind of hazards may be present inside confined spaces so let's go and see what are all the testing methods so before entering into a confined space we need to have a gas test so minimum we have to have gas test for three different gases first for oxygen the reason behind why we are having oxygen as a first detector because most of the multi gas detector are calibrated in uh, good i mean normal oxygen level uh, so if the oxygen level is less we cannot rely on multi gas uh, detectors reading it is calibrated to work in normal atmospheric condition so apart, apart from that we have to test for flammable gases like hydrocarbon gases and toxic gases like h2s and other toxic gases so let's see uh, what are all the safe entry procedure for confined spaces before going inside the confined spaces we need to have a proper method statement a safe method statement which execute which shows us how to execute a job uh, inside the confined spaces and it should be approved from the clients or customers after that we need to have a risk assessment which clearly defines what are all the risks and hazards inside a confined space and it its associated control measures and who will be responsible for what so this should be addressed in in the risk assessment then we have to have isolation before going inside the in confined space we should make sure all inlets i mean the gas in our product inlets are isolated the isolation may be of mechanical or electrical mechanical isolation like physical disconnection uh, spading uh, blinding and a double block with the bleed walls can be put in in place of mechanical isolation for electrical isolation we need to lock and uh, we we can have a lock out tag out lock and tag method uh, to be performed so after that we need to clean the line or the confined space where we are going to enter there are several methods of cleaning available it's all depend upon the products uh, which are going to be cleaned uh, like purging inerting venting flushing and steam cleanings are available uh, to pump out uh, the products uh, which are, which are trapped inside the confined spaces and uh, we need to have a proper uh, permit to work before uh, i mean without permit to work uh, we we are not allowed to enter confined spaces after that uh, the tools requirement is also very important inside the confined spaces 
so the tools which we have to use is non sparking tools and uh, we need to have electrical equipment which can which may possess which can possess a uh, low electric shock like we can use a uh, 24 volt uh, uh, electrical appliances and elcb should be there and uh, we need to have air driven power tool in, instead of electrical driven by this we can reduce uh, electrical you know imp electrical impacts electrocution or electric shocks and uh, all the equipment should be grounded and all the cables and equipment should be heavy duty and double insulated and cylinders i mean this gas cylinders which like organ cylinder oxyacetylene uh, these cylinders should not be taken inside a confined space because if it get released it, it can uh, displace the oxygen and we will suffocate inside and uh, under no circumstances open flames or matches should be used for illumination for welding inside confi confined spaces friction lighter should be used at last we have to see what are all the duties of confined spaces i mean the people associated with it first of all the authorized entrant authorized entrant are those people who are trained to execute the job inside confined spaces only trained and people should be allowed to work inside confined spaces and uh, uh, attendant uh, normally we call them as whole watchers these people are very responsible for protecting the entrance inside the confined spaces these people always monitor the gas levels and they will issue order of evacuation in case of any hazards or uh, any emergencies of uh, plants if they detect and at last supervisors i mean the responsible person who are uh, responsible for you know authorizing the people to go inside the confined spaces to work if it is uh, safe to do so so these are all the duties of confined spaces people and at last some points are necessary to remember first of all do not leave the manhole or confined spaces unattended if you need to leave the confined spaces you just have to barricade and put a no entry signboard at the entry points and exit points and uh, if we are using uh, oxygen to purge definitely it is a wrong idea it's a bad idea actually because if oxygen is used for purging definitely uh, there will be a chances of uh, fire so because we all know oxygen is one of the three elements of fire triangle so oxygen should not be used for purging and uh, if inerting proce procedures are done and uh, it has a possibility to displace oxygen and it will de displace oxygen at some point so it is better to check the oxygen level before entering inside the confined spaces and if we have to work in low oxygen environment definitely air respirators should be used uh, before going inside confined spaces so uh, we should not stay inside the confined spaces after the evacuation order has been given by uh, hole watcher so this is a bad idea so once the hole watcher has issued evacuation order our first and foremost duty is to go out of confined space and uh, we have to proceed to nearest assembly point and some people in the past have died because of confined spaces because they have attempted to rescue other people who might have collapsed during an, an emergency or gas release inside the confined spaces this should not be done at uh, any cost because the rescue is allowed for only those person who are trained to do so they will put uh, down the ba set and they'll go inside the confined spaces and rescue the people and uh, attendant i mean this um, confined space uh, entry attendant should not perform any other job or he, it's his job should be only limited to watching and monitoring the atmospheric condition inside and issuing the order that's all guys if you have any comments or any clarifications on confined spaces uh, you can comment me down and I, i'll be happy to explain you back thank you